Hey, what's up, y'all? What's going on? This is Christopher Harold again, and uh, I'm going to do a quick video for you right now. And what I'm going to talk about is something that's very important because if you're in the, in the world of business, it doesn't matter what type of business it is, offline, online, affiliate marketing, network marketing, MLM, brick and mortar, whatever kind of business that you're in, it's something key that you have, you have to understand, and that is that you are a salesperson. Now, I know a lot of you don't want to be called a salesperson. You know, you don't want to, because, you know, most people think of a salesperson first thing they think of is a used, used car salesman. But trust me, if you're in the business world, and in order for you to make a profit, in order for you to make income, is by you selling your product or service to someone, or someone exchanging your money for what you have to offer, you're in the world of sales. And if you're in the world of sales, you need to understand there are five mistakes that 90% of people out there make on a regular basis. Uh, and I'm calling this the five biggest sales mistakes and it's five things that you want to avoid. I know you hear my little boy in the other room. He's watching Mickey Mouse. But we're going to carry on. It's live TV, y'all. Uh, you know, that's how we do it when you work from home. Uh, but five of the biggest sales mistakes that people make. Now, personally, myself, I can share this with you because why? I've been in, I've been in sales. I worked for a sales company in 2005 while I was in outside sales. I started my own music production company in 1998 while I was selling my music and selling my things of that nature. So I've been around the world of sales for over 14 years. So I think I know what I'm talking about, working for myself and working for uh, corporations. And, and these are the five biggest mistakes that I've seen that I've encountered offline that I've also seen that I also happens online. And I'm, I'm gonna break these down for you. The first one is already on the board. And it, it is not understanding selling. Too many people don't understand the sales process. They don't understand that. We, we can have something called a 10 step sales process. So it means from your initial contact with someone or a prospect to the end. You know, So yeah, it's like step one to step 10. Well, a lot of people out there are teaching you, for example, some car salesman. You know, they teach you to be aggressive, to be hard, to be snobbish, to, you know, to be this kind of way, be pushy, pushy, pushy. Well, if you around someone and they're mentoring you to teach them that way for sales, no matter what type of business you're in, chances are they're probably not that good at what they're doing. Because why? Think, think about it. The things that you wanted to buy, have you been pushed into, into buying those things? Have you been forced into buying those things? Or maybe you made the decision yourself, maybe you was coerced or influenced, but you didn't like being pushy. You don't like those type of, type of tactics when someone is already harassing you and wants you to sign, sign, sign. Well, a lot of people don't understand how selling works. They don't understand that to be a professional salesperson, you're actually a master influencer. And that's what you are, or, or a persuader. And your goal is to persuade people. You know, you want to get on their side to persuade them to, to, to see what, what you have to offer them benefits them. Where you're not being pushy, where you're not being too aggressive. So you really need to study their sales process. And in addition, people that understand, try to study the sales process, what they go back and do is, if they didn't make a sale or, or when, when they met a prospect, they go back and examine their, everything all over again. And they write down, they try to visualize what happened. Is there something I said? Where did I go wrong with the sales process? They, under, they study the sales process to make sure that whatever I didn't say or whatever I said that drove this person not to make a decision with me, I'm not going to repeat that next time in the future. So you want to understand that you want to understand the sales process and totally respect the sales process that's number one number two is of the five biggest sales mistakes that are made today number two is I hope y'all can read that using words that kill Using words that kill. A lot of people don't understand the power of words. They understand that sales is a language that you need to be very cognizant of what you're saying to people. And the words you use create images. And they also create emotions, good as well as bad. And so you gotta be very careful in the language that you use, no matter if you're online, if you're in your sales letter or your sales video or a website or however it is that you present what you have to have. 
someone to see offline, if it's personal, personal contact, if it's, if it's at an appointment, things of that nature. You, you want to be aware of certain words that you want to use and you want to change your vocabulary. For example, you don't want to use words such as cost. Cost makes it seem like it's, I'm about to lose a lot of money that's coming out of my pocket. When, when, when someone, and I see this quite happen, someone said, well, it's only going to cost you a thousand bucks to do this. Or it's only going to cost you 500 bucks to do this. Cost sounds like I'm losing something. You understand? What I'm it, it doesn't give me the emotions or, or, or the imagery in my mind that I'm gaining something. It sounds like a lot that I'm losing something. And so you, should, you shouldn't use the word as cost. I teach folks when I mentor them, I teach them to use words such as invest. When I have my, uh, my real estate investment training, when I, when I teach people how to invest in real estate, uh, and, and, and also my internet marketing training that I, that I do, I teach people how to change their language. Don't use the word cost. Use the word invest. Because the word invest sounds like that, hey, I'm going to get something out of this. I'm not losing money out of my pocket. I'm gaining something. I'm, I'm, I'm willingly giving you this because I'm going to gain something in return. So that's what you want to do. You, you, want, to, you want to create the picture in people's mind that I'm gaining something in return and I'm not losing my money. Uh, another example, people that use, uh, I'm going to use the word, but people that use agreements or forms or the word contracts. If you know, when I did my outside sales, one company we had a we had contracts. People had to sign to agree, you know, to our terms of service. Well, I never used that word contract. I always used the word form. When I was about to close my deal, I said, "Hey, let me give you the form to to, to get your information on there, or let me show you the agreement." I never used the word contract. Why? Because once again, when you hear the word contract, it creates negative emotions. It brings up those things that gives you a leery feeling about something, right? Why is that? Well, since birth, since you were yay high, you know, you've always been told that you should never, ever sign a contract. That's why companies like Metro PCS, you know, use that, you know, for their benefit, no contracts. But the word contract, it creates a negative image in your mind. And so you want to be careful and not to use those words, those other words as well that I, that I train people on when I'm mentoring. But those are some of the things you want to be very aware of. The language that you use can either make or break your deal, or as we said here, it can either kill your deal or it, it, it can make your deal. So be careful with your language. Uh, number three. Not knowing how to close. This is a big one here. Why is that? Because you would be shocked that a lot of people, they rant, 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 and rant. When the person is literally opened up their wallet or they pulled out their checkbook and they're ready to give you the money, you're still renting, you're still selling. You're still trying to sell, you're still selling. And, and, and all they're waiting for is you to say, hey, where do I sign? Too many salespeople, too many people in the world sales don't know when to ask for the deal. You know, they don't know when to ask for the deal. They keep going, they keep going. You need to be able to read buying signs. You need to be able to study the prospect. The prospect is ready to be a customer. You need to get the money now. Why? Because if you don't ask for the sale, you're not going to get the sale. People will sell themselves to you, but you still got to ask for the business. Um, that's one thing that, like Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, he, he's a perfect salesman. And, and one of his uh, things that he lived by is that he always says he always be selling. You know, or what, what you say in the world, the world of sales, not always be selling, always be closing, the ABC of closing. You always be closing from step one to step 10. But the moment you walk in, the moment you meet with someone, the moment you get your first contact with someone, you should always be closing. You should always be using language that closes. You should always be uh, be uh, pointing your whole process, your, each step of your presentation should, should be getting them closer and closer to the, to the close. So that when you ask for the business, you're not even asking for the business. They're willing to give you the business. Does that make sense? Um, so you need to always be closing. For example, if someone is selling cars out there and someone says, okay, um, they, they like this car here, but they want it in red, but you got it in blue. And they ask you, well, um, do you have, happen to have this car in red? Well, the average salesperson would say, well, I think I may have it in red. Now, what, what did you accomplish? Nothing. 
you didn't bring the person one step closer to the to the close or anything. Instead of saying, well, I think we might have it in red, what you should say is, if we have this in red, would you be ready to take the car home today, or did you want us, do you want us to ship it to you? See the difference? You see what I did? Instead of leaving that question open-ended, I brought them to the close. I brought them to make a decision, either yes, I'm going to take it home today, or no, I'm going to have it shipped to me, or, or no, I don't want it. But I'm, I'm, I'm going get, to get an answer. A lot of people are afraid to get an answer. That's why they won't ask for the deal. They're afraid of rejection. You can't be afraid of rejection in sales. You know, because you know what? It's better to get a no from somebody than get someone to string you along and along and along and never give you an answer and, and you exert all this effort and still trying to market to them and still trying to pitch to them when they have no interest in what you're offering. It's best to get a no from the beginning to save yourself a lot of time. So always be closing. You know, if, if you're fixing something, if you got an online business and someone got a technical question and they're interested in joining your business and they got a technical question, well, you should say, well, if I find out X, X, Y, Z, or you, will you be willing to start the business today? You got to ask. You got to always be closing. So don't be afraid, but you need to learn how to close. All right? Number four. Lack of sincerity. A lot of people struggle with this because people can see your greed, people can see your lack of interest in the benefit of someone else miles away. One thing I used to hate about network marketing is because you were trained by people who made you see every family, friend, everybody in your phone book, everybody in your sphere of influence as dollar sign. And and, and, and it made it very difficult. And so you you a one though. So you ever wonder during Thanksgiving or Christmas, no one wants to send you an invitation because they're tired of being pitched by you every time you come around. Well, that, that, that's what happens when you have no sincerity toward others. When people can see the dollar signs in your eyeballs when you see someone coming. Well, there are also people out there who have a very unscrupulous business where they're selling products that they, don't, they won't even buy themselves. You know, if people out there are selling crappy stuff online, doing crappy affiliate marketing programs or crappy network marketing programs, or even crappy products in brick and mortar business, something that you, you, if you were to ask them, they wouldn't even sell themselves. And that happened to me earlier in my career. It's some stuff that I know I wouldn't even want myself, and I couldn't sell it. I couldn't pitch it. I couldn't. I can't pitch something to somebody that me myself, me myself, and I wouldn't want to invest my money into. So I couldn't see myself using. I can see a benefit in what I was pitching. So, and people would and people would see through your lack of sincerity because if you know you got a crappy product and you know that someone cannot really benefit from it, you shouldn't be trying to sell it. If you have an affiliate program and you haven't bought the program yourself, you haven't went in and, and see, saw what the program is about or a network marketing program, you haven't used the product or service yourself, you need to have some honesty and, and integrity about yourself. You shouldn't be trying to sell it. Now, I know some of you are not going to listen to this. Some of you are going to do what you want to do, but... You, you, you know, you guys in, in, in the minority. The average person can see right through, right through that. So, if you, if you if you can't show sincerity to someone, if what you have to offer someone can't truly benefit them, they will see right through that. If everyone to you is a dollar sign, they will see right through that. If everywhere you go, you got to pitch a product or service, and you don't really care about their interests, you're not asking them about their interests, you're not you're not trying to see how you, if what you have to offer can truly benefit them, but it's all about you, you and you. You will fail in sales. You will not have a lot of success in sales. So people do people see through that lack of sincerity. So that's the fourth biggest mistake that people make today in sales. And the last one, but not the least, is it's a big one. I'm putting it in red. Not keeping in touch. I see this big in the offline and online world. I first learned this in the offline world when I worked for a company doing outside sales, commission only sales, and uh, I learned, I understood the power of follow up. Understood the power of uh, it's more than just making a sale with something. So, you know, some people main focus is making an initial sale, and then they disappear off the face of the earth. 
They never contact the customer ever again. They never follow, follow up to see the product or service is benefiting the customer, how it's working out for them, which is a grave mistake. You know why? Because who is more likely to buy something else from you? The person who already bought once. It doesn't matter what company, what type of company you're in. Repeat customers are your best customers. Why? Because they already bought from you. They trusted you, trusted you enough to buy from you, and they would do it again. Plus, they would refer other people to buy from you as well. So why do so many salespeople just focus on the initial sale and they disappear? Because they're poor salespeople. Most of them will not last more than a year in the business. Like I said, I've been in sales really for since 1998. Different types of businesses, different types of industries, but still it's been something that I've been selling. And the reason I've been able to now learn is a follow-up system. And now that I move a lot of my offline stuff strictly online now, I realize the power of, of an automated system, a system that will follow up with people when they come to my website. You know, when they come in and see the presentation video, what's key is that you got to have a follow-up system to be, a, be able to stay in contact. you got to be able to reach out to people, stay in contact with them. Because why? Not everybody buys the first time they come across what you have to offer them. So what are you going to do in that situation if you have no follow-up system in place? You're just losing money. You're losing potential business. So, so, and so it's key that you stay in contact with those customers because, because again, they're more likely to buy from you again. They're more likely to refer someone to you again. And if they don't buy the very first time, if you keep in contact with them with constant follow-up, then once they're ready to buy, you know, sometimes advertising says you, you know, someone needs to see something seven times before they're ready to buy. Well, if you don't have a follow-up system in place to reach out to someone seven times on the online or offline world, then you're losing money. You're leaving money on the table. So, guys, I want to give you this quick video. I don't know how quick it was, but in-depth video on the five biggest sales mistakes and why probably 90-plus percent of the people out there in the world of sales online and offline or committing these grave mistakes and they're costing themselves thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in income. Your bank account reflects these things. If, if you're committing these sins, I would say the sins of sales, if you're committing these things, then you're only hurting yourself and you're hurting those around you. Just imagine if you would fix some of these areas and how your life could change. So guys, uh, post a comment on the video below, uh, like it. Also, visit me on my blog. I have a lot more information at my blog. You can check out at nowandforever100.com. Again, nowandforever100.com. Also, have more content and in, in, in internet marketing training that you can find by clicking on my, my uh, by going to my website at workwithchrisherald.com as well. Workwithchrisherald.com. Or you can click the links below these, this video here. And in addition, check out the other videos on my, uh, on my channel here as well, the youtube.com forward slash get cash money from home so uh, hope you enjoyed the video here um, you know rate it I'll talk to you on the other side but God bless guys